Hi calculus students, it's Dr. Claire here, just giving you a little bit of an informational video about the mastery-based grading system we're using this quarter. Oof, I forgot to breathe. <laughs> okay, all right, let's try that again. All right, hi calculus students. This video is just a little introduction into our mastery-based grading system. So I know what you might be thinking, you're like, Claire, why? Why can't we just do what all the other teachers do? Why can't you just grade me normal? And like, I hear you, but this is really meant for us to have a more equitable classroom, a classroom that values different types of knowledge and different types of showing how you know something, and that honors the fact that life is wild right now and you might not be able to get everything done by every deadline all the time. Also, we have this myth that you should be able to learn quickly and demonstrate that you can learn in like a small amount of time on a times test. And I just think that's bogus. I think you should have as much time as you want, at least within the period of the quarter, to show that you're learning something and that you really have mastered the idea. So that's what's behind mastery-based grading. It's this idea that you are going to show mastery on the topics in our course over time. And if at first it doesn't make sense to you, you have the opportunity to resubmit your work and demonstrate mastery a second time or even a third time around. I also just want to mention that I didn't make this up. I'm not the only person doing this. There is a whole community of math teachers who are really committed to doing mastery-based grading as a more equitable and effective way to assess student learning. So just know I didn't make this up on my own. I'm not doing some wild scheme I thought up, but even if I did, that'd probably be okay too. But just know I have people to consult with. I've had some meetings to make sure I'm doing this in a way it makes sense. And I've thought a lot about it and I'm really confident in the system. And I think it's going to be good for us this fall quarter, even if there are some bumps along the way as we try it out for the first time. Okay, so let's talk about the grading system. Instead of getting points or percentages on your homework assignments and on your project, you're going to get a rating or a mark on a four point scale. This is what we're calling the mastery rubric. So there are two levels that demonstrate mastery. You can either exceed expectations or meet expectations. Either of these marks are considered passing and you can be confident that you did a good job on the assignment. You do need some exceeds expectation scores on your homework to get certain grade levels and having more of them will give you a higher decimal grade in each bracket. So you do wanna be aiming for that and you can revise to get that exceeds expectation score, but just know that meeting expectations or exceeding expectations are considered mastery. Then there are two levels that are not yet mastered. So these would indicate that you either didn't turn in the assignment or it's just not quite done yet. You turned it in incomplete. So at these levels, you would need to redo the assignment or improve it in some way to show that you can move into that mastery category. The main thing I want you to take away is that if you get one of these grades that you're not happy with, so let's say you get a needs revisions and you really want to improve it to mastery, you can resubmit that work and improve your grade. So if you have a week where things just aren't going right, you can't finish an assignment, it's okay. You can come back later and turn in a new one. If you like wait till the end of the quarter to do all that and you try to turn everything in at once, we're probably gonna have to talk and I might need to limit how many things you can resubmit, but as long as you're just resubmitting things as you go and making a good effort, we won't have anything to worry about. So the way final grades will work in this course for you to get a decimal grade will be depending on how many assignments you completed at mastery, how many exceeds mastery scores you have, and how well you did on the concept portfolio. So the concept portfolio involves doing four problem sets, up to eight peer reviews, a summary, and a reflection. So not all of the grade levels require all of these parts, but you'll need to do all of them in order to get that 4.0 that you might be hoping for. But honestly, I think 4.0s are a little overrated and maybe you don't need that on your GPA. Maybe that's not your goal. So there are other levels and you can go ahead and look at that ahead of time to know what I'm expecting of you to get every grade level. This is nice if your goal is just to get a 2.0 to pass the class, you can make sure you know what the 2.0 requirements are and meet those and then feel really confident once that's happened that you're ready to go and you can only go up from there. Okay, I just also wanna mention that on Canvas, you're going to be using something called a learning mastery gradebook. So the grades are gonna look a little different than they might in your other classes. 
it's a built-in feature of Canvas. Canvas has this available for us to use. So maybe that'll tell you I'm not like totally out there. They really already had it in the system for us to try. And so when you look at your grades, you're going to be using that gradebook. Also, all of the assignments appear to be worth zero points. So that's because we don't really have points in this class. We just have mastery on assignments. But just know that because it says zero, that doesn't mean it's like not important. It still matters and it's still required. And I'll always have a task list for every week. And that's where you can go to make sure you're getting what you need to get done, done. I've also created a checklist for you to complete as you go throughout the quarter. This is totally optional, but it's just a way for you to sort of fill in little boxes and watch your grade go up as you continue through the quarter to get whatever grade you're hoping for. All of this information is available on Canvas, and so you can look there for any of these things. It's also repeated in the syllabus if you need to look another place for it, or just send me an email or a Canvas message. I'll help you out. Before we go, since I think I've given you all the basics now, I just want to mention that this decision to do mastery-based grading was really influenced by a talk that I watched online over the summer. It was from Dr. Spencer Bagley at Westminster College, and he spoke about ungrading as an act of resistance. So this really stuck with me, and I watched the talk, and it really meant a lot to me. It is really important to me that you feel like you have a place in my class, like you have a sense of belonging, and that you can show up with your full identity, whatever that might be. So what I want to do is to create a grading system that reflects that, that reflects that you might not get everything on the first try, I definitely don't, that you might need some extra time, and that you shouldn't have to perform in the way that your teacher tells you to, to do things in a certain time setting, or to act a certain way that they think is right. So I'm not in charge of how you are, or what you do with your life, or how you know things. You get to be in charge of that. And so I want to create a space where you can show me what you've learned and we can work on it over time and make sure that you're mastering the concepts and you can demonstrate that mastery to me. Obviously math has some ways we typically do things, but that's just how we typically do things. You can understand it in your own way. You can explain it to me in your own way. And as long as we can communicate, that's what I think is important. But if that looks a little different from what I was expecting, that's fine. I'm here for it. Let's get to know each other and work together. So just know that I'm doing this to hopefully help you feel like you have a place in the math classroom and in class with me as your teacher. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, send me an email, a Canvas message, or post on the discussion board if you have any questions at all, and I will talk to you in the next one.